So welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is John with Swing Fit. Are you currently in the market for a brand new set of irons? Maybe your current sticks has got some life on them and it's time for an upgrade, or maybe you even have your eye set on a brand new iron that just dropped and you're like, you know what, I got to have that iron in my bag, but just not quite sure if it is a good fit for you. And heck, how do you actually compare that iron versus some of the other irons in the industry that may share similar characteristics and traits so that way you can actually do that apple to apple comparison to get into the right head? Well, if this thought has ever crossed your mind, and then today's video is one you're going to want to watch through its entirety because we have a great head-to-head -head comparison for you where we recently did a fitting to help a customer move into one of these three bad boys right here and each one of these irons shares enough similar characteristics and traits to be grouped into the same category and by the time this video is over not only are you going to understand the significance and the importance of why club fitters will group and categorize their irons within the fitting matrix but you're also going to understand which iron was the better fit for tonight's customer and who knows we might even be able to share enough information to help you understand if one of these irons might be a good fit for you so let's dive in So before we get too deep into today's topic, I do want to take a quick second to welcome any new viewers to the channel. So if you happen to be interested in learning more about the club fitting process, I mean really gain a better understanding of what club fitters do day in and day out in order to help them take their customers game to another level, then I can guarantee you, you are in the right place and you're just a couple clicks away from gaining access to this information each and every single week. So consider hitting that subscribe button below and turn on that bell so you don't miss out on any of our new content. Now in an attempt to make sure we're on the same page I do want to take a brief second to help you understand how we divide up our fitting matrix and the reason why this is important is because depending on where you go or at least what information you may have reviewed or researched you might see an iron that we would call maybe a super game improvement or a player's game improvement iron be called something a little different. But please don't get wrapped around the axle just because I call it something else because the key thing I want you to walk away with is as long as a club fitter has these divisions in his fitting matrix, he can actually compare like-minded heads so that way if you do come in with a special request, we actually know which category to go to to do that apple to apple comparison. And the four distinct buckets we utilize in our fitting matrix looks a little something like this. We have our super game improvement category, our game improvement, players game improvement bucket, as well as our traditional players irons. And without question, the three heads that we're gonna take a look at tonight is gonna to fall into this third bucket called players game improvement irons. So enough chit chat, let's take a look at the customer's initial series of shots using the brand new Ping I-59 irons, which also happens to be the iron that the customer was most interested in trying. And as you see from these series of shots, it doesn't really look bad whatsoever. And we're going to peel back the numbers in just a sec to tell you what we like and what we don't like. And this is actually paired with the Dynamic Gold 105 Extra Stiff Shaft. And for all intended purposes, the only changes we're going to make from one option to the next is the actual club heads because we found that this shaft worked very, very well in the other two heads, you know, so that way it's about as fair as a fight as we're going to get. But before diving into the numbers, let's talk a little bit more about the player profile, which happens to be an aspiring mid handicapper who's trying to break into the single digits for the very first time. And the customer shared that he's gotten really, really close. And the number one thing he feels that's holding him back is he doesn't have the ability with his current irons to work the ball in both directions. And as as you've seen from the series of shots, customer definitely likes to work the ball a little left or right, but he says he just finds it next to impossible to work it the other way. And there's no secret, going down in size can potentially help you out. And at the customer's current swing speed of 87 to 89, there's no disputing, he's got enough horsepower to generate the ball speed we need to get it to go as far as we want. But the key is, can we get it into the right launch windows and be able to get it to land soft to hold those greens? So let's take a look at the numbers. Now at first glance, these numbers look really dang on solid. Heck, I'll even go as far to say that if the fit ended here, the customer would be in a great position to take his game to another level. I mean, he's got all the numbers in the right windows that we want. Great ball speed, great launch, backspin's awesome, descent, perfect, 47, 
peak apex, matching his club head speed, that's good, uh, and great carry numbers. So, you know, there's really nothing to shake a stick at. And the question remains is, will this package be enough to help him work the ball a little right to left now? Now, you know, when we take a look at the delivery, let's take a look, you know, great efficiency, great angle attack, club path always out to end, and that face to path just being a hair open. And that's just gonna require a little bit more technique and practice to get that dialed in to start getting it to go the other direction. But that's a potential red flag, so we're gonna keep an eye on that. But uh, before we take a look at the next set of tracers, let's talk a little bit more about this I-59 iron and what makes it so unique. Now, there's no disputing that this is Ping's most advanced iron that they created to date. And although this isn't gonna be a full-blown product review, there are three key differences that separate this iron from the other two we're about to talk about, with the biggest difference coming down to the material that Ping is using to fill that cavity. So unlike PXG and TaylorMade, where they're using some type of injection process, filling it with a polymer or speed foam, Ping has elected to go with an additional piece of metal embedded into that center of that iron head. And they're using the aluminum-based alloy. So not only is it known for its soft characteristics, but it's also super lightweight in design. And even the customer stated that it didn't feel bad on those off-center strikes. And heck, we didn't even see any diminishing ball speed returns on those off-center strikes either. So really two thumbs up for Ping thinking out of the box and going with a little bit of a different process. Now this next one has to deal with Ping's ability to accommodate different type of loft requirements based on the customer's needs. And Titleist does something very similar where they have the T100 and a T100S where the S is a little stronger loft. Well, Ping wanted to kind of reduce the overhead, come up with one iron design that could accommodate any type of loft, and they have created a power spec option. And that's just two degrees stronger. And in fact, that's exactly what we used for this entire testing process process was 32 degrees of loft in all three of these heads. So that way, they was all apples to apples. So if you find yourself in a situation where you need to adjust the lofts and might be concerned about the CG characteristics, then this iron might be a good choice because their engineers have already taken this into consideration. Now, without question, this is probably the coolest feature of them all, especially if you like to play those early morning rounds or don't mind playing when it's raining outside. And if that sounds like you, then going with a golf club that can actually help you wick the waterway no different than a tire on wet pavement would be a great choice and ping appears to have this on lock at least that's what our testing has demonstrated and, and others in the industry has done similar tests to also validate that and you know ping's using this hydro pearl finish and kind of think of it like rain x for your golf club so if you do find yourself in that situation going with an iron that can help you kind of keep the rubber on the roads could potentially help you out so now let's take a look at the second series of shots which is now using the pxg gym four irons. It's the 0311T models with the Dynamic Gold 105 extra stiff shafts. Now, at this stage of the fitting process, we gotta make sure that we're always maintaining, if not improving, on the previous combination. And anytime we see the numbers go the opposite direction, those become potential red flags and we may want to move on. So let's take a look at the compare tab. And sure enough, ball speed did drop and that will be our first red flag. Launch angle, backspin, practically stay the same. So that's a wash, you know, side angle, practically the same, but look at carry. Carry did drop as well, and it's just three yards. And although it may seem like I'm splitting hairs, a drop is a drop. And But bring your attention to that top right corner because this would be my big concern and would get my biggest red flag, and that is customer no longer has the ability to drop shots in buckets. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the PXG head. I'm just saying that it's probably not the best fit for my customer based off of what we are seeing now. And, you know, I do like the PXG heads, especially for customers that need heavier swing weight demands. And here's why. By bringing your attention to the back of the iron design, because this is something that PXG is doing different than that of the other mainstream manufacturers. This truly is a club builder's dream to be able to increase the swing weight by being able to swap out these weights with 
heavier ones. And anytime we can add two grams of weight to the head, we're gonna affect the swing weight by one point. So if you have a customer that needs to be like D5 or D6, guess what? I can actually be laser on precise and increase those weights to achieve that without affecting the CG location from heel to toe. And anytime I actually have to use a tip weight in the hosel, I run the risk of moving that strike point or that CG location closer towards the heel. And that's never a good thing if you're trying to live out of the center of the face. So this is a great option if you do need a little heavier swing weight. Now, last but not least is the TaylorMade P770 with the Dynamic Gold 105 extra stiff shaft. And as you start to watch these shots unfold, there's no disputing this is performing a little bit better. Not only are we hugging that center line a little bit tighter, we're also accessing a different launch window. We're actually just coming in a little higher and landing it a little bit softer, but you know, the tail of the tape never lies, so let's take a look. And just remember, the name of the game is maintain or improve on a previous combination. And when we look at that ball speed column, we was able to get our ball speed back to where the ping was. And I'm not gonna split hairs, I'm gonna call it a wash, but we was able to maintain our original ball speed. So that's a good thing. Launch angle, we actually was able to get it up and I'm able to confirm that if I bring your attention to the top left box, which depicts how high the ball is going and how steep it's landing. And no question, the P770 was the highest and landing the steepest. So that's always a good thing. And that's courtesy of that extra degree of launch. Now backspin, guys, I'm gonna contradict myself here and I'm gonna throw you a little bit of a curveball. And that is backspin dropped, and I just made a statement earlier that anytime the numbers go down, that's a bad thing. Well, not always if the corresponding numbers that it directly influences is getting better. So in this situation, a little lower backspin is a good thing as long as we're getting the ball up higher and landing it softer in which we was because this is gonna actually allow the customer to hit the ball farther. So high launch, low spin will definitely allow you to carry the ball just a hair farther in which we was able to pick up, you know, an extra two yards over that of the ping. And once again, it seems like we're just splitting hairs, but if I bring your attention back to the top right, no disputing, look at that dispersion circle and just look how even that dispersion circle is. And this is always a great thing that I strive to help my customers achieve is, you know, whether the ball is 10 feet to the left, 15 feet to the left, I want it to be no more than 10 feet to the right, 15 feet to the right. I want it to be an equal distance because this is gonna give the customer the ultimate workability because it's gonna be a nice neutral delivery that he's seeing right now. And as he continues to work on his technique, he's truly gonna be able to work this ball right to left or left to right because this dispersion circle is about as tight as I would want it. Now, before I hang on my hat and I call it a day, I do have to help you understand why did the P770 edge out the I-59? And please understand, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the ping irons, nor am I saying there's anything wrong with the PXG irons. I'm just saying for this specific customer, the P770 was the best fit and the explanation comes down to offset. And no question, the P770 has the most offset out of all three of these. Now I'm just talking millimeters here. So we're talking like fractions of an inch, you know, if that of a difference between the other two, but it's just enough and as all the customer needed to find a little extra time to square that face up. And that's the only difference there because we had the same swing weight, we had the same loft, we had the same shaft, same grip, same everything other than the head characteristics, that was the only difference. And once again, for this situation, the P770 was the best fit for our customer. So in closing, we truly hope you found value out of this information we share with you today. And and if you have any questions or comments, please do me a favor, leave them in the remarks below. And if you have any suggestions or feedback, please share that with us as well, because we're always looking for content ideas to make sure we're helping you find the answers that you're searching for. But until next week, please don't forget to take a look at one of these videos over here, because there might be a couple golden nuggets that can help you take your game to another level. So thanks again for watching.